Okie dokie. Here's where I get serious. As if I'm not serious every other time. Even though I make jokes. Um, because when it comes to a lens review or a camera review, I get serious. I've been uh, pounding this camera like a redheaded stepchild all day long. I even went through two battery cycles. It's a new X100F Fuji. By the way, this is a little flash cue trigger. See how tiny this is on this camera? Fuji should actually buy this company, or at least put their name on these little damn things. Do you know you can do high speed sync at 1 4,000th of a second with any damn speed light made, including studio strobes? You know, I can't do high speed sync with any of these pulsy buff studio strobes back here, but I can with the leaf shutter. The magic ha 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 of a leaf shutter, right? So, anyways, this is a new Fuji X100F, $1,300. I uh, own, well, actually, I say I did own the Fuji X100T up until a few days ago when I let it slide to pay for this camera. I knew this would be a significant upgrade. How surprised was I since I haven't had my hands on this camera until this morning? Actually, I was a little more shocked than I was expected to be. Um, other things that people in other um, pre-production reviews did not mention, I discovered. I was like, wow, you know, they never mentioned that. That is like so insanely important. Um, stuff that other people think is unimportant, they just uh, fail to mention. Um, obviously, I'm not going to read off a bunch of specs to you because you can get that crap anywhere on the Fuji X100F. By the way, this uh, unit does not come with this hood adapter and you can buy this off-brand by Velo for 20 bucks for $22. I'll post the link below. This is the Fuji one. This is the adapter. I have a filter on here, a B&W filter, and it comes with this hood ring which is 80 bucks. So it does not come with this. You actually have to unscrew a metal ring off the front of this, which is kind of tight when it's new from the box. You actually unscrew that and you screw on this adapter. You don't have to put on a filter, obviously. And then you uh, put on your lens hood like that so it does not come with that. Unfortunately, it'd be nice if Fuji did this. Then you're thinking, $1,300, why is this so expensive? Because the hybrid viewfinder on this thing is pretty damn expensive. And compared to a Leica, of which this is far superior, and I love Leica film cameras, but Leica digital, I mean, I'm sorry, but to hell to the hell with that and back again. No way, no how. Far superior camera. Made in Japan, magnesium alloy. It's not weather resistant due to the design, but no camera is weather resistant because if you ever want to make someone laugh really, really hard that's been fixing cameras for a long time, just mention the word weather resistant or waterproof. They'll fall on the floor and they'll pee themselves laughing. So if you bring up weather resistant to me or anybody else, it's like, well, this camera's not so damn what. No camera is weather resistant. I'm sorry. Well, you know, some of them are marked. I don't care. None of them are. Makes no difference at all. Um, so how much of an improvement is this? And let's go over some of the pluses and minuses. This camera's only got a few minuses. Um, has a lot of pluses. Now, first we have to talk about the you know, X100, X100, uh, S, X100T. S standing for second, T stands uh, for third, and F stands for fourth, which is obviously this is the fourth iteration. They say third time's the charm, but uh, better late than never on this one. This camera, by the way, leaves me wanting for nothing. Um, let's go over all the notes, and I made sure I went over everything over and over again because I take camera and lens reviews as serious as a goddamn heart attack, okay? Look into my eye. I think this is also the first commercial version review of the X100F um, on YouTube. The rest of them are fluff pieces by shills and puppets who got pre-production models. So, hooray for me. This is a first, even though it's not the first review. It's the first commercial review of the Fuji X100F. Um, I think this is an actual an epic winner. Now, that's a subjective statement, so let me qualify that with existential details and parameters as far as why this is a significant, and I use that word very carefully, significant upgrade from the Fuji X100T, which I've owned now for well over a year, and I just sold it off a few days ago. Um, a few words I could actually define this, and I'll use a few, wor a few more in a second, is that this camera is much boosted and a far more refined version of the X100T as far as an upgrade. Compared to the X100S, or the X, uh, X100S to the X100T, which were the prior versions of this model, it was not all that drastic an upgrade between the S and the T. Uh, this does qualify, and I made sure I used these, this word specifically and, uh, you know, with, with great uh, judgment in saying this, that is, this is a significant upgrade um, from the X100T. Significant, okay? 
what would qualify as a radical upgrade? Now, on a scale of 1 to 10, I would actually call this a 6 plus as far as an upgrade from the X100T. The X100T was about a 4 or a 5 uh, compared to the X100S. Now, when we're talking about a radical upgrade, where we're talking about a 9 or a 10, that would be the obviously Fuji X-T1 to the X-T2. The two of those is a radical gap between them. I mean, that is a really radical upgrade. Um, let's quantify that and talk about existential details in the Fuji X100F. Um, specifically, let's talk about five parameters and go over the details in the Fuji X100F. Battery life. Of course, now we're not limited. To, if you've never owned an X100 series camera before, if you thought a mirrorless camera battery life sucked, well, the X100T and S, blah, 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 they used a tiny little battery, of which I had three of them, which I shipped all of them off, the person that bought my X100T. And no, I did not sell it to any of you people. Now we can use the regular X-T2, uh, X-Pro2, X-T1 battery. So that's awesome. So it's a larger battery. You got more power. Great. That's awesome. Um, sensor. Going from the 16 megapixel X-T1 sensor to the X-T2 sensor, X-Pro2 sensor. 24 megapixel X-Trans3 sensor. Autofocus. Significant. Significant. I use the word significant. Now if you're thinking... You know what this is, right? Some people don't know what this is. Like, a lot of people don't know what the, the GFX camera is. They're like, some people that have reviewed the GFX are like, well, this camera's not too fast. It's like, that's a hardcore commercial product camera. That, that camera ain't made to be fast. You know, it's not an X-T2. It's not designed for sports action wildlife. This camera is specifically a street slash candid digital rangefinder. This camera is not for, you know, taking out the room, you know. Not for tracking rabid squirrels on crack out in the trees, you know. So if you're expecting that, that's a mistake. However, this is a significant autofocus upgrade, both in low light, continuous autofocus, and single. I did a lot of testing on this camera. Dead serious is a heart attack when I do a camera lens review. Significant upgrade, no hyperbole. I actually quantify this as roughly about a 2.8 times better if you actually, if I take everything, including single autofocus, low light autofocus, and single and continuous autofocus and regular lighting conditions and low light, auto, uh, low light conditions, this is nearly, but not quite, three times as good as the uh, X100T. It is. Close focus. There's some guy online that's comparing his X100T with an X100F, and he has it, he focuses like this, like about eight inches away, and then he, he tilts it up. And that's not a test. That's someone who doesn't know. People, there are a lot of dummies out there that you know, don't have a brain in their head. They don't know how to test a camera. But it is about three times better than the X1. And that's the same lens system. It's the same stepper motor. So this is not a fast camera. The X100T, however, in even slightly low light condition, was abysmal. Like, oh, you just wanted to slap yourself or slap the camera. Just, oh, just. This camera leaves me wanting for nothing. I'd also know that if I were to go to some place like some sort of get-together outdoors where there was some sort of action, volleyball or whatever, that I have, would have no reservations as far as what I found. I've done action testing on this already by going outside. Cars, motorcycles, people, blah, 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 blah. I'll post pictures tomorrow or day after tomorrow. I've been insanely busy testing the hell out of this thing to make an intelligent, well-reasoned review. That you would have no problem in doing medium, autofocus, action, photography with this, which of course actually defines street and candid photography anyway, but something even better than that, because even the X100T was good enough for that, but it was still abysmally, abysmally to, still too slow. Aperture chatter still does exist on this camera, like the X100T. It's like, is the aperture chatter still there? Yes, the aperture chatter is still there. Could that be fixed in a firmware update due to the design necessities of how this camera is? That's been discussed long before and the answer to that is a very very unlikely no. So we have an improved battery, we have an improved sensor, 24 megapixels from the 16. Autofocus, oh my god, much better. We've gone from 49 autofocus points to 325. This camera is the Shiznitz. This is probably, I know Nikon's going to roll out something big in June or July, but I've actually been more excited about waiting for this damn camera than anything else the rest of this year, including GFX. I shot medium format for 20 plus years. I, you know, there's nothing exciting there. It's slow, methodical. You know, it's going to be a wonderful camera. I probably will get it. I'll definitely test the hell out of it. But I'm more excited about having this camera than anything else 
rolling out this year, except maybe the full frame uh, Nikon FX camera. Um, due out in June. Let's go on to, um, and I'll delineate autofocus here in a system uh, in a second. We also have a joystick on the back. We've also moved all of our buttons uh, from the left to the right. There are a couple cock ups, as that's what the British people say. That's a cock up, mate. Or as the Australians say, it's a bit buggered, you know, they shouldn't have done that, eh? We'll talk about that in a second. <laughs> yeah, I know. Australians hate it when you talk in that stupid accent. Um, so we have a joystick now. Awesome. We also have a front command dial. Awesome. I'm also going to do additional uh, uh, looks at the X100F. I'm going to do close-ups. We're going to take a look at some of the close-ups and specifics. I will do uh, one or two training videos, and I'll also do some flash instruction on this for people not owned this uh, camera before or know anything about a leaf shutter. So I will do close-up and detailed examination on this. So this is not the only review, but this is the full review on the Fuji X100F. Um, the buffer. Oh, damn. The buffer. Oh, damn. And this is not a card. Yeah, I got the fastest cards money can buy, okay? So don't ask me what sort of damn cards I'm using. The buffer is a lot better. I will uh, get to those details uh, in a second. What is it? It's almost, almost three times uh, better on the buffer. I uh, I forget the number. I've got it written down here somewhere. I I wrote down so many notes on this camera. Um, considering the fact this is far superior to anything Leica has, this is a steal at actually $1,300. A lot of the expense on this... Um, is uh, A, the leaf shutter, and B, uh, the fact that it has an optical viewfinder, an electronic viewfinder, and an optical range finder. It actually has two pop-up windows, um, one for EVF projection, and the other one is another little window that pops up. Um, that's, um, let's go on to the other points here. Uh, yeah, magnesium made in Japan. Uh, the fact that it isn't weather-resistant doesn't mean a damn thing at all because no camera is weather-resistant. I said I'll post pics this weekend. Um, 24 megapixels, the exact same 23 millimeter f2 lens as existed on the X100T and X100S. They move the buttons to the right. The joystick autofocus point movement is exactly the same as on the X-T2. Um, by the way, did I mention it's a leaf shutter camera? And it's like, well, what sort of... Now, Fuji says, well, you know, this camera will work with the EFX500, which I've got two of those. It's a big-ass flash. I mean, that thing's bigger than this damn camera. If anybody sticks that damn thing on this hot shoe, I'm going to laugh my ass off. Someone should take a picture of their X100F with that big-ass honking. No, 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 no. Uh-uh. You see this little thing right here? You see, the wonderful thing about a leaf shutter is you're not tied into any crap. That I hate to say that. I mean, I don't mean nothing against Fuji, but you're not tied into anything from any damn buddy, including Fuji's own speedlight. You see this little wireless trigger here? It runs off a watch battery. It lasts like a hundred thousand shots. I could do high speed sync with any damn thing out there, up to one four thousandth of a second. Can't do it with electronic shutter. You only do it with mechanical shutter. Do you know what that means? That, that's that's pretty damn significant. Um. So even though put phony, uh, Fuji puts that in their brochure on the X100F, so just get yourself an old SB28 or 22 Nikon Speedlight and attach the receiver unit to this, and you could do high-speed sync photography to your heart's content. Obviously, you can't do external speedlight, but you wouldn't want a speedlight on this hot shoe. Man, that'd be the most ridiculous nonsense. That, I've never seen anybody do something that stupid. Um, so anyway, that's about the flash. I'll talk about that later in another video. ISO range now has gone from... Uh, Improvement uh, from ISO 200 to 12,800 on the X100F with extended options of pushing to 100 and pulling to 25,000. Um, 15 minutes record time on 1080p and 30 minutes in 720p. We have a built-in, it's actually a real filter, it's not an electronic uh, addition or uh, electronic filter, it's an actual real drop-down three-stop ND filter, which is incredibly important for crushing ambient light and actually adding, uh, adding your flash illuminate, which is so very important for high-speed sync photography with a leaf shutter. That's the reason why there is a built-in three-stop ND filter. It's like, why is there a three-stop ND filter in this camera? It's because it's a leaf shutter. When you combine a three-stop ND filter built into the camera with the fact that it is a leaf shutter that can do high-speed sync with any damn freaking speed light ever made, basically, then you have, ha! The reason why every professional that has two brain cells wants this damn camera. Um, optical and electronic uh, viewfinder. Also a pop-up electronic rangefinder for uh, focus peaking and exposure, uh, exposure assist. Um, we've got, like I said, from 49 points to 325 autofocus points. The new improved menu system, which is the same as on the X-Pro2 and the X-T2. 
It's a big improvement. Uh, greatly improved battery life, with, like I said, using the Fuji X-T2 battery. The, fri the five primary things, once again, huge improvements that make this specifically a significant upgrade are battery. Oh, yeah. Sensor. Oh, yeah. Autofocus. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the joystick. Oh, my God. And the buffer. The buffer is a huge improvement. What has the buffer gone to? I, I wrote down the specifics. I knew immediately in testing it that it was uh, radical. Yeah, here we go. X100T buffer capacity, 25, just as an example, 20, which I don't shoot JPEG. I shoot RAW plus fine. But 25 JPEGs is 6 frames per second on the X100T. But on this little baby, we have uh, 60 uh, buffer capability of 60 JPEGs. So uh, we've gone over double on the buffer capacity. So far as uh, just pure raw data, it doesn't matter if you should talk about just a JPEG shooter, which I'm not a JPEG shooter, or a uh, raw plus fine shooter. We basically have, and I noticed that too, stuck it in continuous high at uh, eight frames per second. And you sit there and click them off, just rip them off, and it did not, you know, the buffer was a lot faster than on the uh, X100T, which is important. I mean, if you gotta wait to go back to return to your shooting, then that's an issue. Um, there is no grip yet, but it is coming, a detachable uh, grip. Um, there is no uh, raw support yet, but it is coming. I talked to a Radiant developer. He says it's coming very, very soon. It's also coming to Lightroom soon. Um, the subcommand dial for ISO is small. It's the same as on the X-Pro2. We actually have to lift up the shutter speed dial and actually rotate it. But you can actually change that to auto ISO, which I absolutely hate auto ISO. Uh, so that's something I don't like. We actually have to lift this up and do that. I never like that on the X-Pro2 feature, but that's personal preference. Uh, a serious cock up, a foobar, is that right back here, the Q menu button is right where you stick your damn thumb. Now, what you're going to have to do is change your thumb from this number, where you actually place your thumb on the back of the camera, to the tip of your thumb. What they could have done is they could have moved this over a little bit and placed the Q button up here, and you had a resting place for your thumb. Ah, uh, sticking the Q button right here was stupid. So you're going to have to train yourself, as I will too, as so far as uh, moving your thumb so you don't smack the Q button. Fuji, this is actually the most serious uh, foobar, fuck up, on uh, this camera is sticking the Q button right there where you stick your damn thumb. So you're going to have to use the tip of your thumb on the back of the camera instead of the, the pad of your thumb. Um, yeah, that's not an issue at all. Um, it's something where mine was actually smudged, <laughs> smudged from the fact it was like, Fuji, you should have cleaned the front lens of that camera. Some, and it was brand new from the box. So when someone hadn't opened it up, I mean, I could always tell that. Um, the thumb rest levers that fit in your hot shoe, which I never like those anyway, but I got a couple of them. They don't work now because of the, the displacement difference between the rear command dial and the hot shoe. So if you have one on the slide in, uh, thumb holders, like you have on your X100T, nah, ain't gonna work here. Nope, no, no, it blocks the dial. Well, you could kind of reach in there if you like jam your thumb in really hard, but essentially no, no dice, uh, no dice. Um, they changed the, uh, they kept the jack the same. They should have went with a 3.5 millimeter jack, but they still kept the same old damn uh, 2.5 millimeter jack. I'll show you some of the additions I actually did to this camera so far as my own personal upgrades. The uh, label on the bottom that shows the serial number and stuff, that's all gone. What has uh, been, not that it's important as far as the operation of the camera, but it's been moved to the inside flap of uh, your uh, port's door right there. You can actually see the serial numbers, blah, blah, blah. They actually moved that there. If you see the bottom of this camera, it has nothing on the bottom of it. That's the first thing you're going to see because it looks like someone ripped it off. It's like, where's the serial number and all that other important data? Um, I said the hood adapter, instead of spending 80 bucks for one of these damn things, which includes the hood and the adapter, because that's the first thing I do on this damn camera, instead of paying 80 bucks for a Fuji one, which is way overpriced, you can get the $22 one. I'll post the link below. Everybody seems to love it. I have not tried it um, since I already had this one anyway. Um, like I said, it's... It's not three times faster than the X100T, but it is about 2.5, 2.8 times faster. It is. I am left wanting for nothing on the X100F, where I was absolutely, undeniably, you know, puckered on the X100T in many, many instances. For action, forget about it. This thing, the X100F, and testing, not my my feeling or belief, no, but this is still, it's a candid slash street camera. This ain't for, you know, squirrels on crack. That's what your X-T2 is for. But this leaves me wanting for nothing. In other words, I'll leave the house with it. I don't care what happens unless it's squirrels on crack or, you know, uh, leaping antelope. I have no issues uh, packing this camera around knowing that I could hit anything I want. And not only that, but, I mean, rip off a buffer, rip off a stream, and have the buffer clear instantly. And, you know, really significant battery life. Awesome. Um, 
Yeah, and continuous side of the buffer clears really fast. The stepper motor that drives these lenses are natively not that fast. Same sort of stepper motor that drives the 35mm f1.4 Fujifilm. It's not like quad linear motors driving this little, you know, uh, 23mm uh, f2 lens in here. Okay? But the engine's been greatly improved, so is the buffer, so is the battery life. There are five significant issues that make this specifically a significant upgrade from uh, the uh, X100T, uh, which I had for over a year. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, thank God. The X100T and the X100S had a shitty uh, on-off switch that stuck way the hell out, and so if you ever packed this in your pocket, people would accidentally turn this on and off with their clothing pressing up against it. They fixed that. Thank God Fuji listened, so that crap, no more issues there. Really nice. The huge, I don't really, I didn't even care really about the shitty battery life on the X100T, but the fact that the, that the buffer on this sucker is a lot better and the autofocus is, ah, uh, yeah, better. Uh, yeah, this, I never tell anybody to sell their camera, so I'm not telling anybody, like, hey, go sell your X100T, X100S, go buy this thing. I don't do that, so, um, they just, I guess, yeah, I'll, I'll tell, I'll do the training video and the close-up on this later. If you like this video review, you can drop me a buck or two, you can tell me to jump off a cliff, all those links are below, not the cliff, jump off the cliff thing. But remember, we got battery, yeah, sensor, yeah. Autofocus improvements and autofocus track it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the joystick. Yeah. That's right, girlfriend. And the buffer. All those five things together, and you have to use the word significant. Okay? As opposed to the S to the T, which was a moderate or medium upgrade or improvement. And like I said the words that define this camera as opposed to the X100T are much more boosted and refined in very simple words and uh, it's a winner other than sticking in the Q button in absolutely the wrong frigging place no big deal I can work around that um, this is the camera that I've been waiting for for a long time the X100T was also the camera I've been waiting for um, but it was not quite there yet it left me you know it left me you know aggravated at times let's use those words so that's it. I absolutely love it. Um, this is a detailed review. I hope you think it was detailed because I've been crushing my skull on this to make sure it was specific and accurate and uh, existentially. Not my feelings and opinions. They're like, oh my god, it's so pretty. You know, screw that crap. Nobody wants that kind of crap. People want accurate, genuine information. And so that's it. Uh, check the follow-up videos. I'll do training videos and a close-up look on the X100F. And thank you so much for watching. Luxi Viritas, and see you later. Bye.